Right now, there is a competitive Senate race in the state of Pennsylvania. The Democratic candidate is Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, and the Republican candidate is Dr. Mehmet Oz. The latest two polls have had the Democrats ahead, and we're going to be talking about what they mean and why I think that we need to... So much. Why can I not talk? What did I say last time? I, dude, I watched these when I'm like, but I said, Derek, I have no idea. You're asking for a little too much detail on this. I lost my... Okay, here. I'll, I'll listen to the 17th thing recording. Give me a second. By the way, has anyone ever been on one of your like non-podcasters or YouTube videos? Yeah. I've done collaborations before. I once talked to a guy who was like, very nice to me, but was clearly Oh, terrible. damn. I was hoping I was special. No, but I once talked to a guy who was a terrible person who was just nice to me, but he was awful. Good God. He was like the worst Trump supporter. Oh, my God. That, that guy's crazy. Have you ever had, have you ever had Red Eagle on your podcast or on your YouTube channel? I almost did, actually. Oh, wow. You he, actually, he, he actually once asked to debate me, um, and I couldn't, and then he called me chicken, and I was like, all right, buddy. And then I and then I and then I was like and then and then and then I asked to reschedule and he couldn't do it and then he just dropped it because yeah, yeah. okay I got it I listened to this empty thing part okay hey guys and welcome back to an hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and in today's video we'll be taking a brief look at pennsylvania senate race where john fetterman is trying to beat mammon oz to flip the seat for the democratic party the latest two polls have had Fetterman up by nine percent and six percent respectively but in case you've been watching my senate predictions you'll note that i haven't changed my rating away from lean republican i still think dr oz is favored and so this begs the question how much more good polling for fetterman will it take for the consensus to change so on today's uh, video, I'll be br uh, briefly bringing in a special guest, Evan Scrimshaw. If those of you who don't know, I have Evan on my podcast, and Evan writes for The Lines. He uh, will tell you if you want to make money betting on politics, you can read his columns to The Lines. He writes freely, uh, as Scrimshaw Unscripted. He wrote a novel, Salvation in the Storm, which you should buy. And he has uh, done many cool things with election predictions in the past, and he is someone that I greatly trust when it comes to election predictions. So Evan, how's your day been going, man? Oh, it's been going well. Uh, how was yours? It's been going pretty well too. I'm. Uh, I, I've recorded a lot today, but it, it was a, a pretty good day. Um, so yeah. Uh, so the latest poll that we're looking at right now had John Federer beating Mehmet Oz by six percent, and this is notable because this race is not expected to be a six percent win for either party, uh, especially not for Federman, because I think Oz is favored, and as does Evan. But uh, so, Evan, do you want to briefly explain why we think these polls might not ba pass the basic smell test if you haven't been following as closely? Because when was the last time Democrats matched their polling in the Midwest? Like, I just don't know what we're doing here, guys. Democrats get overly, you know, like, so this is the second poll in the last 10 days, which is Democrats doing really, really well with Pennsylvania whites because John Fetterman has this like special appeal, or whatever. And that's all like, maybe whatever. We can argue about whether there's a chance that that's true or not. But we did this with Richard Cordray in Ohio in 2018. Like we did the whole like, but what if the polls are right? They're probably not. We did this with Wisconsin. We did this with, with uh, Ohio. We did this with Iowa. We did this with Mich we did this with Pennsylvania, and yes, like did Biden win Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin? Yes, did he win by anything like the polls were saying? God no. So why are we trusting them now when there's no reason to think they've changed? Yeah, I think that's like uh, that's a good example. I also think that another part of this is that when you look at the polls cross tabs and just uh, see what the polls saying, it doesn't really make a ton of sense. Fetterman is uh, up by 6% over Dr. Oz, despite the fact that he's losing independence by 12 points, which doesn't really make a ton of sense. He's losing men by 4%, which isn't awful, but there's a big discrepancy between men and women because he's winning women by 14 and losing men by 4%. So that doesn't make a ton of sense. And he's winning voters between the ages of 15 and 64, which is usually a reliably Republican group. And he's actually winning boomers too, voters over the age of 65 in this poll preferred veteran by about 4%. So Aside from the fact that polls admit that we have no reason to trust polls in the Midwest, when you look at this poll, it doesn't really pass the basic, the basic smell test because it's just like, 
these cross types don't make, make any sense. So Evan, why do you think that the polls are just misfiring so much here? Because you've got overly secular groups of voters. The Democrats in Pennsylvania are very secular, very socially liberal voters. They're more likely to answer the phone and you are more likely to get secular, socially liberal, high trust in government voters or trust institutions, but government institutions mostly, to be the ones to respond to polls. And so what you get is way more democratic suburbanites in the Philly caller and way more like democratic supporting um, like tradespeople in like Scranton or Pittsburgh or whatever um, as the ones who are actually answering the polls because independent is like a thing that people say you can get like really wonky independent samples um and the other sort of like thing is just like dr oz is allegedly 33 points underwater on approval and just like i don't i don't believe that i just like maybe it's actually true and maybe oz has like really burned all of his republican bridges on one side and also burned like all of his crossover democratic appeal at the same time but like well-known national figures being 33 points underwater on approval is just like unheard of in this day and age so i don't buy it for a second i agree with you i think this poll was wrong i fetterman might win in november i'm not going to change my prediction i don't think you are either but I, first of all, I certainly don't think it'll be by 6%. And I don't think that he can win by six while losing independence by 12. I also don't think he'll win boomers. And I don't think that he's going to win voters in the older uh, spectrum. So uh, thanks for coming on. This was kind of a short little, I guess, mini podcast. If you we just talked about the polls, for those of you who weren't really following uh, the polling in Pennsylvania. But uh, yeah, Evan, I, I, I just want to have you wrap up and I guess briefly explain why you think that Dr. Oz is favored fundamentally. Because Pennsylvania voted three and a half points right of the nation in 2020, and I have seen no reason to think that John Fetterman will be able to do meaningfully better with white working class voters in the T in Pennsylvania, the middle part, and then the North Strip. Um, the Dr. Oz won't be able to counteract by doing better than Trump in the Philly caller. And also, John Fetterman's probably not going to have like Biden level black turnout in Philadelphia proper. I agree. And I think that's why both of us have uh, John Fetterman currently losing this race, regardless of what the polls say. So thanks so much for coming on. Uh, and you are welcome back anytime. Thanks, man. Thanks.